guys what's up welcome back to a new video i don't know why i just did that but welcome back to a new video i'm pretty sure most of you guys know that i'm not from okinawa i've just been living here for 17 years ever since i was three years old but <laughs> i was born in aomori prefecture that's where my mom's from and that's where my mom's side family are all at so we go visit them about every year you know before corona and you guys always ask what's the difference between aomori and okinawa so it'd be really interesting to tell you guys the difference between o um, it'd be really <laughs> It'd be really, really interesting to tell you guys the difference between Aomori and Okinawa. So here we go. Okay, so let's start with Aomori. Aomori is way up in the north of Japan. It's right under Hokkaido. It's very cold and it snows a lot. I remember one time we went to visit them in winter. I'm not really good with jewelry. Like my body is probably allergic, but I had my ears pierced and i blame it on the snow and cold i don't know if, if that's the reason why but my ears were swollen like so badly after playing in the snow so that's when i was like i don't really like snow but you know it's fine it's fine now so i'm not very big on cold you know i remember this one time my grandma's neighbor's granddaughter we were like the same age she took me to her school's yard it was like a winter wonderland. I've never seen so much snow. It was just so beautiful. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I fell in love with that. But like the ear thing, no, I'm not up for that. <laughs> but yes, it's, um, it's very cold. Even in summer, the climate changes drastically. In the daytime, it can go up to almost 30 degrees Celsius. But at night, it drops down to like 18 degrees Celsius. It's definitely cooler and colder up there where my mom's from actually i was born in misawa but my mom's from aomori city and they speak the tsugaru dialect this is really hard to explain i looked this up so i'm just gonna tell you guys what i found on the internet there are 47 prefectures in japan right and apparently each prefecture has its own dialect so so they use different vocabulary, different pitch accents. Some even differ in like the way they use consonant and vowels. So for example, um, I'm not very good at Tsugaru dialect because I've, you know, I've only heard my mom and my grandmother and like my mom's friends and relatives just talking Tsugaru dialect. And I try, I try to copy them, but you know, so I'm gonna try my best, okay? Don't judge me. But anyway, if you wanna say, oh, isn't that little girl really cute? In, I guess, normal Japanese, you would be like, oh, you know? In the Tsugaru dialect, you would be like, that's my best Tsugaru dialect. I can't. They say menkoi, which basically means kawaii. Yeah, just stuff like that. I remember this one embarrassing story. I was in high school um, Japanese class. And um, so my mom, she's from Aomori. She speaks the Tsugaru dialect, but she doesn't speak it here. She just doesn't really like to stand out. So she doesn't speak the Tsugaru dialect here. Only when she's talking to like my grandmother or when we go back. But some words, like vocabularies, are different, you know? So we call the rice, what do you call that in English? The rice scoop thing? This. <laughs> There's some rice on it because I was just using it. But this, this in Tsugaru Bang is called hera. So, no matter where, you know, I thought this was called hera. And so my Japanese teacher was all like, Irina, what do you call this? And I was so confident. I was like, it's called hera. He was like, no. I was like, what? He's like, no, it's a shamoji. And I was like, I've never even heard of that before. So that was one of the like most embarrassing Tsugaru Japanese, you know, difference episode that I had. Thanks, mom. But yeah, some words are different. Like if you want to say like nani nani dakara, basically means like so something something. They say like nahande or you know stuff like that. I don't know. It's it's really interesting, you know. I don't hear it every day. I don't hear it much. So when I go back, everyone has that dialect, and it's like so amusing to hear. But apparently, to like some of my Japanese viewers, I have the Okinawan accent. I don't think my accent is that strong. Not even compared to my sister. She's like full on Okinawan dialect. If someone says like, "Oh my gosh, it's so hot today," and I would say like, "Right," you know, in Okinawan dialect, you would be like, "Dakara yo," you know. I I use that a lot. <laughs> So, 
Kyoto-ri has this festival, this big festival called the Nebuta Festival. You don't have to sign up or anything, you just have to get the costume or like the, what you have to wear and you can just enter. Like you don't even need to like sign up or anything, you can just go. <laughs> and it's really fun. In Aomori, I don't know about other prefectures, but in Aomori, they have this thing called Chirin Chirin Ice. It's my favorite. Every time we go there in summer, I eat that like every day i'm there it's so good it's oh my gosh if you guys ever get the chance to try it please try it it's like oh it's so good but basically what nebuta festival is you see this big statue kind of thing yeah people actually push it and the people who are pushing it are high school kids and doing part-time jobs which i thought was like really cool so these things they all have a story behind them right and it's made out of paper and they put led lights inside and then they just push it and then it's like it's so beautiful if you ever get the chance to go to Aomori and see the Nebuda festival please do it's free so <laughs> and then we say like nasera, nasera, while like hopping around August 2nd through like August 5th or something. I think on the final day, they have this thing called Umi Nebuta and Umi and Umi means ocean. So they basically put those this statue things on the bow and they like go around while fireworks are going behind them and it's so beautiful. If I have a video, I'll put it here. Also, what I've noticed is that people in Aomori ride bikes everywhere. Like, there are so many people riding bikes from children to like elderly. You don't see that much here. Even like, you know, office workers, they're like riding bicycles. And that shocked me because, you know, I've never seen that here. Because everyone rides cars here. There's a lot of people riding bicycles there. And there's actually like a lane for only bicycles. And I thought that was the coolest thing ever because you don't really see that in Okinawa. But I think this is like mainland overall because I've also seen some in like Tokyo. Yeah, you definitely don't see that many bicycles in Okinawa, especially like adults riding them. Time zones are the same throughout the whole Japan, right? But every time I go to Aomori, I get so amused by this, but they get dark around like 4 p.m. So we always eat dinner around like 4 p.m. And to me, that's really fast. I looked this up too, okay, hold on. I wrote this down. So time zones in Japan. Before the start of the Meiji era in 1868, Japan's regions were not in the same time zones. I know, I didn't know either. I was like, <laughs> the time was based on the sun's position, understandable. But because of this, and because they had to use trains more, trains, trains more frequently, like they started to use trains more, it messed up their departure and arrival times. Yeah. In 1895, when Japan ruled Taiwan, Ordinance 167 renamed the time zone Central Normal Time, while New Normal Western Time was in place in Taiwan and parts of Okinawa. They kept this time zone until 1937 when it was abolished, putting the whole Japan, including Okinawa, in the same time zones. So you don't really get jet lagged, you know? Yeah, it gets super dark over there around like 4 p.m. during winter at least. In the summer, I think 4.30, it gets like, but that's pretty fast, you know? That's still pretty fast. Whereas in Okinawa, in the summertime, it gets dark around like 7.30. In the winter time, it gets dark around maybe 6. In Aomori, when I go visit, I always look outside the window and it's like, what, it's dark, what time is it? And she'd be like, oh, it's like 4.57. I'm like, oh what it's cool it's really cool you know the most famous thing about Aomori besides Nebuta is apple apples are very famous in Aomori so every year when it's apple season around November my grandmother sends me loads of apples and like candies and just like all this stuff they even have a museum for it over there if you get the chance to eat Aomori apples please try them they're so it's so good. Like they have various types of like apple candies too, and it's so good. 
So, I think that's enough facts about Aomori. Let's go to Okinawa. Okinawa is way down south of Japan. It's very hot and humid over here. I love summer because of the beaches here, but I don't like the climate. It's super hot. Even the ocean gets warm sometimes because of the heat. And it's like... And what's really bad about this is that Okinawa tends to be hot until like the end of November. When it becomes December, that's when it starts getting colder. So Okinawa doesn't really have fall. It's just summer and then winter, you know? Yeah, that really kind of sucks. And like in Japanese school, we have to do like a marathon, like a school marathon. I don't know about all Japanese school, but like at least in my school, we had to do marathons. It was the worst because of how hot it is here. I just hated it and I hate running, you know, so it, it was like really bad overall. But <laughs> so Okinawa is obviously the Okinawan dialect. But if you don't know, Okinawa used to be its own country called the Ryukyu Okoku. They used to have its own language called the Uchinaguchi. It's like a whole other different language. So if you come to Okinawa in the airport, you'll see a sign that says Mensore, which means welcome. Hi Sai, you might hear that a lot, Hi Sai. But what I learned recently, which was really cool, is that Hi Sai is what boys say. And what girls say is Hi Tai, which I thought was really, really interesting as well. So there's definitely big difference, you know? <sighs> So Okinawa has this big festival called the Asa Festival. It's where guys will have this like big taiko, we call it taiko drums, and they like to <laughs> while girls dress up in like this like kimono kind of thing and like they do dancing and stuff like that. Um a traditional dance. <laughs> so fun honestly like everyone's so hyped up you know and there's all these like drunk old guys just like dancing while holding beers in their hand and it's really fun to see that you know like everyone's having such a good time after the performance is done there's always this big fireworks and it's it's really really fun my dad loves it we call it the Orion Beer Festival and the Orion Beer is basically an Okinawan beer. You know, it's where they can drink and just have fun, you know? Like, it's family friendly, so like, everyone comes. Everyone, it's a big festival. It's not only like adults only, but yeah. There is like an adult only section. I think that's where they get like, sell beer, a lot of beer and stuff. I'm not sure, I've only been in there once. Uh, I don't drink, so. Also, I turned 20 this year. I don't think they're gonna have it this year because of Corona, but yeah. it's It was really fun when I was younger. Okay, and this one. I also told you guys about this a bit earlier, about cars. So I mentioned that in mainland, I saw like everyone, adults, kids, elderly, riding bicycles to work and just like everywhere, right? But in Okinawa, we don't have trains here as well. So we really need cars. Buses are always late here. Everyone has cars and that is why traffic hours are the worst. Oh my gosh, I hate traffic hours. I mentioned the most famous fruit in Aomori is apples. The most, fav the most famous fruit in Okinawa, that is so difficult to say, is shikuasa. The real name of shikuasa is hirami lemon. So it is a type of lemon. It's very sour, I would say, but um, they have like shikuasa juice and stuff like that, which I've never really tried it because I don't really like shikuasa. <laughs> it's very, very popular. So if you guys ever come to Okinawa or if you guys ever see shikuasa juice somewhere, you should try it. I should as well. I hope you guys learned something. I definitely did, especially about the time zones. I didn't know that. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you guys enjoy the video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it and follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter and don't forget to subscribe. If you guys ever get the chance to travel to Aomori and Okinawa, please do so. It is so interesting and I feel really lucky that I get to experience both, I guess, different cultures. But I might do another video on, you know, cultures and stuff, so. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye! Bye-bye! Sayonara!